Hello, welcome to Prove It. Today we're going to be proving, or should I say trying to prove, L'Hopital's rule. And I am carefully saying the word trying to there, because as you see in this video, there's a few little uh, quirks to this particular proof today. So, um, first of all, what is L'Hopital's rule? A reminder that it is if you're trying to find the limit as x tends to a of f of x over g of x, then as long as that is of indeterminate form, then that's the same as find the limit as x tends to a of the derivative of f of x over the derivative of g of x. Of course, that all sounds horrible written out in words, but you can see it on the screen. It's really not that bad and a very useful rule when trying to find uh, certain limits. Uh, but, as always, of course, a reminder that everything in this Prove That series, or Prove It series, I should say, is something you don't need to know for the A-level exam. This is purely for fun. So, there you go. Anyway, um, so what do we need to be able to do this proof? Well, the first thing we need is the fact that the fact this is to do with differentiation at all, unsurprisingly means we're going to be using differentiation by first principles. But wait, this is a bit weird, uh, because this isn't the definition of differentiation by first principles that you will have come across as part of maths A-level. Um, it's an alternative way of expressing it. You'll very quickly realize it's saying practically the same thing. I, this idea that you start with two different points on a curve, find the gradient, the straight line gradient between those two points, and then effectively do a limit to make one of the points approach the other point. The definition has just been done slightly differently because of the fact that we have um, the whole point moving to the other point rather than the difference between them being defined as h and just making that gap uh, tend towards zero. But yeah, it's saying the same thing. But this is the definition we're going to use for this proof. So, yep, don't use that one for today. Um, the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a bit of an assumption. We're going to assume that f of a and g of a are equal to zero. Um, now, that is a pretty big assumption and actually uh, is a bit of an issue because, of course, um, you might, uh, from, from being eagle-eyed and knowing L'Hopital's rule well, will realize that's fine for one of the indeterminate forms of L'Hopital's rule, which is that the original fraction is tending to a zero over zero sort of situation. But that does mean we're not dealing with the situation where the top is tending towards infinity and the bottom is tending towards infinity. So um, just be aware that's one of the issues with this proof. We're not going to be dealing with the proof for what happens if the top is tending to infinity, the bottom is tending towards infinity in this video. That's because in general, actually, this is quite a uh, simplified proof, uh, a more in detail full proof. We'll be doing more stuff um, using Cauchy's mean value theorem, which is something not covered at A-level at all. And you're probably aware by now, these videos, I've generally been trying to prove everything using only maths A-level skills. So that's why I'm doing that simplified proof here. But some more assumptions we're having to make, just to once again underline this really is a simplified proof, we're having to make the assumption that f of x and g of x are continuous and differentiatable um, over, well, over the entire function. Um, which isn't the worst assumption to make with the things we have to deal with at A-level because we're dealing with things like sine and cos and e uh, to the power of x and polynomials and all those things are generally differentiatable and continuous, um, asymptotes aside. So um, therefore, a bit of assumption, that's what makes this a bit of a simplified proof, but you know, not the worst assumption to be making the world for our purposes. Okay, so with all that said, um, let's actually start having a go at it. So, of course, we're starting off with the limit as x tends to a of f of x over g of x, and we've got to start trying to manipulate this. So the first thing we can do is uh, basically one of the key things that shows why L'Hopital's rule only does work for indeterminate forms rather than just working in general for any x value at any point. So, um, it is this. We're going to take away f of a from the top and we're going to take away g of a from the bottom. 
And the thing about that is, is that isn't always true. It's only true in this very specific scenario that we've already defined, where we already pointed out that f of a is equal to zero and g of a is equal to zero. I, in other words, the limb as x tends to a of f of a over g of a is of indeterminate form, specifically the zero over zero form. So that's a bit of a sneaky trick there um, and a very specific scenario. Cool. Once we've done that, uh, of course, that you're allowed to do that. Taking away zero doesn't affect things. Um, once we've done that, we can do another trick, if you will. We're going to divide the top and the bottom of the fraction, and because we're doing the same to the top and the bottom is allowed. We're going to divide the top and the bottom by x minus a um, to leave us with what you can see at the bottom there. Uh, and again, because we've done the same thing top and bottom by multiplying and dividing. Fraction has stayed the same. It's maintained its value. Nice. So the next thing, well, we've got the limb out the front, the limit notation, and we can now individually apply that to the top and the bottom just to help us split it up a bit. And so if we do that, we end up with this next step. Cool. And once you've done that, well, now if you're eagle-eyed, you might realize that this is now looking like that definition of differentiation by first principles that we looked at uh, or pointed out at the very beginning. So, of course, therefore, the top is simplifying to the derivative of f um, at the point a, x equals a, and the bottom is the derivative of g at the point where x equals a. So we're left with that. We're almost there. The only thing we've got to do is we've got to convert this back to a limit. Seems a bit silly to be doing it at this stage, but just in case uh, f of a is, uh, sorry, the derivative of f at a and the derivative of g at a are not um, defined, uh, then we need to express them as limits um, in case multiple applications of uh, L'Hopital's rule are needed. And there you go. Boom. We have done L'Hopital's rule. We have proved it and that will do us for today. Thank you for watching.